Our roundtable is up now. WPTV News Channel 5 political analyst Brian Crowley and Mariana Mancuso. From mask in public to reopening schools, so much these days seems to be at the intersection of health concerns and heated politics. What might it mean for your vote, the Florida vote? Well, you know, there's so much complexity in everything we're doing now because of the COVID-19 pandemic. And with the schools, it makes it very complicated. And, you know, teachers are irate about what's going on. Parents are concerned on all different aspects of, of education. If you're working parents and you can't send kids to school, you're worried about that. Uh, you don't want to keep your kids at home necessarily. Everybody's afraid that, uh, you know, that COVID could spread in the schools, and we've seen some evidence of that. I, I don't envy any of the people in this decision-making process. How does it impact uh, people's decision on who they vote for uh, in, in terms of who protected me, who did what they needed to do, who, who respected my rights, and uh, on and on and on? Brian, briefly. Well, I think in Florida, you're going to look from Governor DeSantis on down to your local school board, your local elected officials in the county commission, your state legislative leaders. Uh, and it has been erratic at best. And uh, I, I think that, uh, you know, some people are concerned that we've rushed to open things too fast. If that turns out to have been a mistake, I think in November, some people are going to pay. Now, obviously, Governor DeSantis is not up for election in November, but people will have long time memories if this virus gets worse. Mariana, the president, of course, is up for re-election. Of course, we have the Bob Woodward book out that um, Meet the Press and, uh, and, and others have been covering thoroughly. But uh, what will be the trickle-up effect, potentially, from the question I posed to Brian? Well, the trickle up effect is going to be, were these people safe during this time? Were they protected? And ultimately, how is this affecting their pocketbooks? When we think about this, you know, so many Americans are still without jobs. They're struggling to make ends meet. And now they're being told they have to send their kids back to school. So really, November, it's not that far away. And their memories are not that short that they're going to forget about any of this. And the calculus will be for each person, uh, those who think they should be sending their children back to school uh, might have a decidedly different point of view than those who think it's rushed and could make their decision as they go into the ballot box. A new Florida poll, though, out last week, an NBC News Maris poll shows uh, a tie. I know Brian loves polls, so we had to work one in. Mariana, your take, the race tightening as we knew it would here in Florida. And we're going to hear lots more polls and a race that many say will be right down to the wire in this pivotal state. Well, yes, the Cook Political Report as of Thursday actually moved Florida from leaning Democratic to a toss-up. And that tells me that this is still anyone's race to win or lose. Brian, uh, talk about uh, the president was in Jupiter last week talking about the environment. Uh, he signed an order extending the moratorium in the Gulf on drilling and expanding it to the Atlantic and off the Georgia and South Carolina coast. Democrats were quick to pounce saying just months ago you were for drilling, now you're against it as we get to election time. Uh, talk about that though, we're gonna see a lot more of the president, a lot more of that push here. We'll talk about some of the polling and his push farther south in a moment. Your take, Brian. Well, you know, he's he was in part of Brian, Congressman Brian Mass District. I don't think it was any co coincidence that he was talking a great deal about the Everglades and the environment. I also believe that if Trump wins re-election, he'll go back to allowing oil drilling off the coast because and it's not a criticism. That's just his nature. That's the kind of thing he sees a potential to make money and he he'll drill in off the coast. And, and we've seen that all over the country where environmental regulations have been tossed out to allow oil drilling and other things like that. So I don't think Florida will be exempt. And I think that's something that Brian Mass constituents are going to have to think about as they vote in this election. On Thursday, Kamala Harris went to Miami-Dade uh, at the Miami Herald, as they put it. She and her husband managed to meet together or separately with non-Cuban Hispanics, black voters, college graduates, and Jewish voters across Miami. Separately, Politico said uh, Mark Caputo had an interesting article talking about the fact that a new poll found Biden underperforming Hillary Clinton's 2016 margins over Donald Trump in the county in Miami-Dade, where Democrats, as he put it, need to run up the score to offset losses elsewhere. Mariana, first year take. Joe Biden is definitely struggling with the Cuban vote down in Miami, and they will need to do everything they possibly can because, look, when it comes to winning Florida, you really, it's going to be a tough time to win the votes that you need without the Cuban or Latino vote. 
Brian, help people as we look to election night, we, we tend to look at a map, North Florida, I-4 corridor, South Florida, big democratic strongholds here. Uh, does that still hold true in some respect? Walk our uh, people through a quick primer, Brian, as you've covered so many campaigns, uh, what we'll be looking for and where these strengths will play and where the candidates will make their big pushes to uh, collect votes and support in the run up to election day. Well, a lot, a lot of it is turnout performance. So you can generally expect that North Florida is going to vote conservative, vote Republican. Uh, but again, it's what percentage of voters turn out, how big is that push? You know that uh, Palm Beach County, Broward, and Miami-Dade are going to vote Democrat largely. But again, how big, by how big a margin, how many Democrats show up? Will Republicans surprise people and show up, show up in bigger numbers than they have in the past? And of course, you can filter that down to uh, the various uh, groupings of people. And then the I-4 corridor often is considered the the turning point for the campaigns. And I always think that's a little overplayed because unless the candidates do well in their home bases, South Florida, North Florida, uh, th there becomes too much ground for somebody to make up in the I-4 corridor. So every every corner of the state is critical. You have to do well in where you're expected to do well and, and exceed those expectations in, in the whatever counties you think are your strongholds. And then you have a little more margin for error in the swing counties. Brian, as we move to election day, still uh, COVID will dominate the conversation. Uh, the, the Republicans pushing hard on the law and order theme. Where will the economy be? I mean, really thematically, it, it seems those are the things that uh, President Trump will either win re-election or Joe Biden will make his case there. Do you see anything changing the landscape demonstrably in terms of those being the key drivers? Anything else top of mind for you? Uh, you know, I, as I always say, you know, the economy of the economy of the economy. And of course, we now add to that the, the pandemic. Um, you know, I, all these new revelations that came out last week and in, involving Donald Trump are interesting. They've put a bit on the defense. Uh, but I just not I, I don't know if there's enough there there anymore. He seems to be able to withhold almost anything that hits him uh, because his supporters are intensely loyal to him. Far more so than the Biden supporters are. Thank you, Brian. Marianna, final comment? To Brian's point, yes, his supporters for Trump are just diehard fans, and the president at this rate can't do anything wrong, and that is troubling for those independent voters and those crossover Republican to Biden voters who are hoping to make Trump a one-term president. 